We have met again. We're talking about prayer today. We're going to be praying for the updates that we have on a variety of people. I thank you for calling around and caring for each other and giving me feedback. And I've enjoyed the calling and, and a brief visit or two along the way. Some of these updates uh, are pretty new, so you'll want to take note of them. The New Testament letters tell us, pray one for another. It says, weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. And I hope you do that today as we pray for these special needs. Boyd at 174 Rehab is slipping away from us. Wilma Barrow and her husband David will be traveling to Texas to check on his mother. His mother's not to, to make it. Uh, maybe this one, one more week. Uh, Gerald W. Uh, fell and, and broke open his skull. They did four staples on it. Uh, pray for him as he mends. He's out and about. Uh, Glenna O. has a job interview today and they're praying about finishing their house here in Republic. Pam Blades is continuing to mend from her many, many fractures. Rose S. is doing better with her pelvis fracture. Uh, Deborah W. Uh, has migraines and asks us to pay for her back problems. Emily B. Uh, remember her in the loss of her baby, Melody. Brandy from the Kyle family, uh, the sedation has been taken off. Uh, the lungs have a pinkish color. Uh, the oxygen level is at 50%, so she is improving. Keep her in your prayers. Uh, Retha's cousin, Chris, uh, has a leg infection that's very, very serious. Marty B. will get a report on the Bon Morrow test from Friday. And uh, Dick B., the former pastor, is weak and having trouble breathing. Jennifer S., that works out here at Cox, stepfather, checked himself out of the hospital, and he's had heart surgery, so we're concerned for him and his needs. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for these precious people, these individuals that we lift up to you in prayer and their special needs. We've seen great, great things happen. We've been devastated by some of these who are losing loved ones or who have lost a loved one. Father, we, we share with you these needs because we know you are God, you made us, you are our Savior, and we're asking you to be with us and to be with them and to care for them in these many, many needs. Thank you for a time where we could remember each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow is National Day of Prayer, and our nation surely needs our prayers. And we've seen so, so many maybe raise their hands up, maybe bow their head, call us to pray, and, and this is another opportunity our nation is called to pray. This started in 1775. The colonies were requested to pray for the leadership of the colony. And oh, how we still need to pray for our colonies, our states, our country. It's very important for you and me to realize that God was the one they called on in the inception of our land. Again, in 1952, Billy Graham encouraged two very influential men to call the nation to prayer. And in 1988, our president then, Mr. Reagan, put this into a request that we would all meet annually and pray for our nation. This is such an important thing and tomorrow is the day and you'll be getting some prayer requests during the day to remember as we go through this COVID-19 experience it's been tough and we're not out of the woods yet. It's still a big concern and reopening, so pray if you would. This year, the theme about the glory of God shining over the whole earth is from Habakkuk 2.14. It says this, 
For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let me repeat, the earth, the world, the globe will be filled. It's God's goal. It's God's refreshment, his satisfaction in bringing his glory, the knowledge of him, that intimate relationship with him. That's what he wants to do. That's his will. That's his reason, even in the midst of all this going on, that we might realize and know experientially his glory, his presence, his wonder. And may that be true. May that be true. There's an article in the American Family Association magazine that we get periodically. It is an article that comes from November 2011. And it says in this article a number of things that make us think of America today. So it was a reprint. Listen as I read bits and pieces of it. One nation, our nation, is in turmoil both financially and morally. The problems we are facing are too long, large for us as humans. Culturally, we are becoming more and more pluralistic, more and more secular. Never have we needed God's intervention so desperately. Never before had we felt so hopeless in the battle for the soul of this nation. Is there any hope? Will God answer prayer and save our land? He has answered in days past. The first great awakening in 1734 was just before the American Revolution. The church was in a state of slumber, but, but God did a wonderful work in his power in our land. In fact, they thought Christ was imminent, and that question has come up even today. God answered again in the second great awakening in 1790. Many people lay prostrate on the ground, repenting of their sin. Settlers met in camp meetings all across this land. It spilled over into our churches. In fact, surprisingly, it spilled over into our world. There were a lot of social evils that people began to deal with, child labor, alcoholism, poverty, women's oppression, terrible, terrible thing called slavery. God has worked in days past. We would want him to work again. Again, in 1857, Many people were wrapped up in their wealth and the goods they had, and they were spiritually cold. The great prayer revival of 1857-1858 started in New York. Six people in the midst of the call, only six people showed up for the prayers. And they met, and they met, and they met. And they kept meeting until the collapse of our financial systems. In the midst of that, people began meeting in different places, and at the height, there were 10,000 people plus meeting together for prayer, and God brought the country back to himself. 50,000 people accepted the Lord as their Savior. The article concludes with this. Can prayer save America? In other words, can God save America? I think you and I know that answer. However, will you and I seriously consider praying and seeking God out for his favor in the midst of all that's going on? The stresses and woes of our nation today are comparable to times that were critical in the past. We have seen God save this country before. We're asking the question, God can do it now. Will we pray and seek him out for this? We need a new work from God in this generation. 
so that the world will know that God lives. So the world will know he has the power to help us so that God can bring change to each one of us and to our nation and the course on which it's going. The lady who wrote this article and shared this, her name is Kathy Branzell. She's the president and uh, they have called us to take a look at Habakkuk chapter four, verse 14. And as we look at it seriously, she says, we get to experience his glory. If we will experience his glory, we need to respond obediently to him. She closes with these words. We pray that you will join us in this prayer that God's knowledge, his glory, will go over the whole face of the earth. There's an article in Pathway, our Baptist magazine, and as we get this news, it was a girl by the name of Elizabeth. She and her family up by Jeff City prayed for the governor and those who work on his task force have been praying for him in the midst of COVID-19. She was so moved in the midst of what she and her family did that she wrote him a note that she was praying for him. She knew his work was hard, but she continued remembering him with her family. She sent it to him and he noted and thanked her for praying for the country. We need to be praying for our country. When I read Habakkuk, it indicates chapter two. Before and after this verse, a very, very dark, dark period in the life of God's people. We are going through dark days and Habakkuk is a dismal book, but in the midst a glimmer of hope that the glory of God may be known intimate over all the earth. That same passage is found in Isaiah chapter 11, verses nine and 10. Just before it talks about the fact that this will not harm you. And then after the verse, it talks about the Messiah, the one who's to come, the one who we wish for. Listen, God can still be approached. He can still answer prayer. I hope you with me will join today but also join with me tomorrow as we pray for our nation. All the things we're going on and all the things that are going on in our world that God might do his great work in our midst. Thank you for joining and sharing with us in these moments.